friends and welcome to yet another episode of the BL Survival with Rob Mulholland and Mickey Peaker. And we've said our names in reverse again. As always, it's our thing. To it. It's what we do, isn't it? <laughs> We're very much the BL Seaster Morecambe and Wise. Yeah, <laughs> we probably are actually. Yeah, there's not there's not many other kind of like comedy duo um, people. Is that that's even what we are uh, that are doing? Are we a, a comedy po- duo now? Yeah, we, I, we're oh, a little double act. Is this comedy? That, I think that's very much for the viewer yeah, to decide. Yeah, kind of. Like, I, I've been asking myself that question a long time, uh, ever since I started comedy. But yeah, we, we, there's not many other people doing a podcast about Bielsa uh, who are comedians. I don't I, think there's any. To yeah, I, I, I think, think we're exactly in a field right. of one. We are, really are. And we're so glad you joined us. Yeah. And we're loving all the correspondence. I think that's the word. Yeah, that is the correct word. Let's get into it. Let's have a little look at some of the things that you've been sending us this week. <laughs> Thanks as all as always for getting these emails in the comments on YouTube the b- tweets yeah we like we read them all like, I do apologise we can't get back to all of you there's we get loads of them and we're busy yeah basically. well it's the royal week because I do fuck all exactly I, <laughs> I, do, I read the tweets and comments no, exactly yeah yeah, yeah. this is it right, I'm like, not very good at answering emails no, I know you're awful but um, we absolutely love them and please keep them coming in and if we haven't replied I'm really sorry it's just we get loads of them and we thank you still I try and make them stand out a little bit that's all I- <laughs> <laughs> so, i love the podcast uh i also love Basil bells a bite it's like yeah, yeah that's great and uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm up for those ones yeah Just send I, me all them. yeah I like, I, I, we do like them but try and make it stand out you know yeah. give us a story maybe, give us an angle maybe you know compliment us a little bit and i might read them out yeah but they do don't they? That's <laughs> no it. they do they're dead nice they're... i like your podcast goodbye yeah. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely love them so well, let's get into some of the uh let's have a little read of a couple of them that we've been sent someone's that stood out yeah, well, <laughs> I feel so tight for no anyone who's not had them read out. We genuinely love them all. There's been a loads and thanks, yeah. man. So this first one, this is a YouTube comment from Image of You. Is their name on there? Wow, how poetic that is! Really, a bit emo. That's sent me a bit, a bit west, if I'm honest with you. I'd... So they have said they are born in Chile and a fan of Colo Colo and the national team, and uh, they grew up in Belgium, a fan of Andelect from there, and they still remember 2001 when Leeds came to kill them 4-1 in Brussels. Oh wow. Oh, yeah. yeah that was a that. demolition absolutely was they were a top team as well and the lights are always early noughties they were they were yeah. a favorite i believe there was a bit of a, a bit of needle as well uh pre-match yeah. and they, they'd called us a small club or something like that and remember, yeah it was uh there was there was definitely a bit of like right we've got a point to prove here and bloody hell did we prove it yeah so you're saying yeah he remembers that but he's now a new fan of Leeds united since bielsa's rival oh. i say he actually uh, there's no gender involved in this image so, uh, of you it's asexual exactly uh but thanks guys for this great podcast and shout out to all the devoted marcelo uh, all devoted to marcelo bielsa around the globe mot thank you so much for that one image of you love it um, that was good because it was from a different place that's a bit this not, is always a yeah. winner yeah if you're from somewhere dead weird let us know because that is I say pa- dead weird just <laughs> far away from here weird yeah, from no. where belgium oh god weird how weird are you uh, belgian no yeah. we love you belgian and uh, chileans fans. we love the chileans getting involved we, we know do. how passionate you are about marcelo yeah. so please get involved please send us some correspondence yeah we've got another one here this is from mavis coils also on youtube mavis yeah we've got mavis i like that name yeah no it's a lovely name isn't it it is a good name it's yeah. an old-fashioned name coming back strong I want Mavis to make me a cup of tea and give me a biscuit. Yeah, and knit something. Yeah, it's lovely. Uh, so Mavis uh, writes to say, um, for me, it's like going back to the Reevy day. So this is about last week, you remember in the correspondence, we were talking about the difference between the Wilco era at Leeds and the modern day Marcelo yeah, era. we had that email in from that other interesting email exactly. in a weird place. Yeah. <laughs> Um, wherever that was so yeah i think this is from another weird place in west yorkshire Ooh, but, no, but, yeah um, so yes she says for me it's like going back to the reevee days the difference is we're now getting popular we're getting liked and praised where before we were feared and hated always watching my beloved leads from new zealand now oh there we go. that is weird is. weird yeah <laughs> God. But yeah, great message, and yeah, it is like the Reevee days, but uh, kind of with a, a more wholesome flavour. I think so. Like, th- you know, I love that Reevee team, obviously, but they were hard. Dirty leads. Yeah, it's brilliant. Wasn't yeah, it? and we love that as well. Yeah, exactly. But dead nice now, and thank you so much for that comparison, Mavis. It's lovely to have that perspective because uh, even though you know Mickey does look like he's old enough to remember the Revy era, not <laughs> yeah. quite. No, I knit something, Mavis. <laughs> I don't, what, what do you do in New Zealand? Just like you've got loads of sheep there, just go yeah. pull it off the back and get me. <laughs> just off you go. Yeah. 
<laughs> it is, there's a lot of sheep there. Uh, and we've got another one here. This is a lot like this one's brilliant. Um, this is from Christian Gallup from Rosario. Gallup, that's a good name, isn't it? I know it is, yeah. yeah it's fast. Yeah, it's got a uh, yeah, dynamism to that name. Yeah, definitely. It? I picture like this, he's on a horse going for it. Is that yeah. where, whereabouts is it from? Rosario. Oh, wow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, so that's, that, that is not weird. That's holy. Yeah, we're from the. Yeah, this is very much our Jerusalem, isn't it? Yeah, is yeah, it is yeah. actually, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, totally. It really is. It so, really is. Um, this was about last week. If you've watched the last episode, uh, do watch that. You know, you can watch this one or that one. You'd have to watch them in order. But the last one. You do, actually. You, oh, right. Have you been leaving no, little I don't. secrets? People, people have been binge watching it, I apparently. Know, I love it. Like, yeah. We're very much the Bielsa Netflix. Um, but yeah, if you have seen the last one, episode six, we were talking about fights, basically. And yeah, Bielsa getting his scraps. Ones. Yeah dead fun and uh he's added to this so say hello guys oh, right. there are several more fights by bielsa so we found we talked about five or six different fights of course there's more fights christian's got some more for us one with jose luis chilever you must remember chilever yeah. the paraguayan goalkeeper yeah. the scorpion kick like the most you know that, that was maverick. just uh, that, that was uh, late 90s i think wasn't it when yeah. he just he did that thing yeah he was and just was an just, absolute maverick he used yeah. to take free kicks and penalties he like, was really good at him as well yeah he was amazing and like just that God, classic it, mental keeper he was the first and probably the only actual the keeper that just attacked yeah he was, he was amazing he attacked um but yeah so on the underlap on we the talked underlap, about yeah he's my favorite goalkeeper of all time I oh, think. He, is, he was amazing but not necessarily pilsas to be honest with you so um because he, he had well well he's had a fight with him yeah he had a fight in his time um so when um bielsa was manager at velez sarsfield um yeah. Shilver was the keeper there Who'd he won the title with yeah so he had a fight there so we need to look into this story more we will do we'll try and find the full details of this but they remain friends after the fight um christian says that's it. important so Bielsa does love him. He fought him. Exactly. And the, then they were friends. That's, yeah, that's yeah. so Bielsa. Big personalities, you know, like that sort of maverick. I, I can't imagine he wanted to fit in with the system that much. I think they had to come to blows. Yeah, they had it to. sorted. Do you they had his keeper gloves on? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, with it, with a, little a little bit of, bit of protection. Though, yeah, yeah, I think it's easier to hit things when you've got keeper gloves on. Yeah, We've yeah. all done it. Protect your knuckles a bit. Yeah, yeah. it does. Doesn't it? It's like, do you know what? I fancy getting involved. They're like UFC it. gloves, aren't they, with fingers? Yeah, yeah, they are. <laughs> and they've got that they've got like the grip on them as well do you reckon that'd be more grip your face like God, and ripped out you know, be, yeah if you could have a fight fight with goalkeeper gloves but or could it cushion the blow do you think it would work I think slightly but i think that would uh, help you if anything because like you can't hit as hard with bare knuckles because you break your knuckles oh i didn't i, I don't know because I, I i mean i'm like you i just vault over bars and get hit <laughs> <laughs> but <I don't... laughs> call back to episode six yeah um but yeah there's another one he's written by Christ. god they're getting hit by the night they're tacked okay. get, 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 get your gloves on right, so on. we've got another one against uh, miguel a russo uh he was a manager who was identified with the arch enemy of the city um i don't know if you even want to say this name rosario central oh, God. Uh, th th we, we try not to talk jerusalem about is split isn't it rosario so, is split right down the middle yeah, as well so he many. says uh, christian says that um russo yeah. would be described as the argentine version of lampard so that is oh oof. don't do that i'm sure they're not that's oh. that's horrible so we've got we've got a measure of the man yeah uh, and what in a both, horrible man he must in be in both cases it was to defend their ideals and prioritize the team over individual privileges is why it came to blows that's great oh, that's bielsa again and uh, another memory he had. He would have won the fight, I imagine. Probably. We need more info on that fight. We will. We'll look into that more. We'll get yeah. more on those stories. Please send us some more information about these brilliant fights because we want to talk about them. Yeah. We'll celebrate them. And finishes off here with another memory I have from the golden age of New Wales, 1998 to 1992, with three national championships and two international runners up in the Copa Libertadores, is that the Bielsa team of 1990 to 92 dominated the games almost always at will. If we, uh, if they score, uh, da, da, da. Oh, if we saw they scored a goal, we were sure we were going to score another and win. If they scored a goal, we were sure we were going to score one. Like we know this. Yeah, we do. And they say that an army of ten thousand sheep led by a lion is more fearsome than an army of ten thousand lions led by a sheep. Well, Bielsa's teams are eleven lions led by a lion, always on the attack on any court and against any rivals. Greetings from Rosario. Keep it up. Thank you so much, Christian. That's brilliant. Can you imagine an army of of a thousand lions being led by a single sheep? <laughs> and maybe it's just in the background. Oh, come here, come on. <laughs> I'm knitting these lions. Oh, they look a bit chilly. What are they doing out here in New Zealand? <laughs> Making them a little woolly mane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just lion in sheep's clothing. I think it's the... <laughs> they just 
eat the sheep, though, wouldn't they? They, they, they yeah. would eat their own leader th- within within seconds. I it would be, and, then, a... and then they'd probably turn on each other, and it, and and then it's just lions trying to get some kind of hierarchy going here. I mean, what, who is in charge? Well, have you heard the phrase? It's like herding cats. I think it would be very much like that. But these ones are big cats. They are big harder. and aggressive cats. Yeah. So um, get your goalkeeping gloves on. And let's sort them out. So what we've learned is, if you're trying to lead an army of lions, punch them with goalkeeper gloves. I, that is that's a saying. I'm sure it is. Well, it is it now. It is now. <laughs> Thanks so much for your letters. Correspondence. <laughs> so, uh, our regular feature on this pod is to chat about uh, the last week's games, and we've got loads of Bielsa clubs involved. Rob, mm. I believe you're the man to do the research on this, although you did say I should do it, but I didn't do it. Yeah, you never do the research. We'll start with no. one that we uh, we know well. Like we saw Leeds United play Wolves the other night. We did. As, as, as of time of recording. A pack of Wolves. Yeah, it was... Uh, what did you make of the game? Uh, first, two, a game of two halves is the old cliche, <laughs> but... Um, yeah, really, I, I enjoyed it. Posts. I, I thought we played really well. Uh, we were really unlucky, and, mm. and I tweeted out uh, something straight away, and uh, it's a very championship-like game. Mm. It, it felt like last year when we were sh- the ball was out wide, a zillion different crosses going into the box. Yeah. No real clear-cut opportunities, actually, but we f- conceded a very unlucky goal. We did. Uh, and um, we lost the game, but we we probably should have got something out of it. Totally. I think there was... Um, I, I noticed the definite step up in quality playing against a team like Wolves. You saw their individual quality, their strength and their like skill on the ball and also their ability to break that precisely. Yeah. We just saw that extra little level from Wolves. They're a really good side. Would well, you we... know what they did? Defended amazing. Brilliant. Connor Cody and that, that, oh, that lad was... who got the man of the match was their centre-back, which yeah, says a lot. They, 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 didn't put a f- they literally did not put a foot wrong. No, they were fantastic and we've got to give them credit for that. Like Leeds were really good. We played very well. Um, it was a classic... Like, you know, we're on top yeah, of it. Yeah, I, I think we struggled with the final ball. We uh, did. And that's not something we said this season yet. No, it was, uh, you know, it was um, difficult to get any service to Bamford, really. They were yeah, putting everything out. He did, but not much to sniff out, really, Bamford. This is it. It was one of those games for a striker where it's inc- impossible to find space. They, they're a, a team who are very comfortable in that position of digging in and waiting for their opportunity to strike, and they did it really well. They're also a second half team as well. They've, yeah, they've come they on are. strong in, in the second half or for the last few seasons. They, mm. they, they tend to get the measure of you, and then they'll. Uh, but to be fair, the, the, the game, I looked at the stats. And stuff they only had a couple of phases mm. uh one of them was just uh at the start of the second half where they managed to get the goal just after their phase actually it was such an un- it was such an unlucky goal it was a poor yeah. strike actually uh but the- and then they just managed to hold out and and really we didn't create too m- too much we got to the byline a few times yeah but there wasn't too much going Sniffs on of a penalty on costa i've seen them given i've seen them given uh the, the commentator was like no that's not a pen but then yeah, looking back on it and it's like he's literally not got the ball clipped knees clipped legs yeah. as well and you've definitely seen those given it was one of those it was that tight a game though it was always going to be like it was going to be one goal either way yeah know? it, it could have gone either way and, and yeah. we were unlucky not to get a and point we take the positives out of it and there was some real like i'll be honest with you like first half i was just again just grinning from ear to ear and like from the lesson of you know bielsa of enjoying the games i'm really tr- i'm really doing that you know yeah and me like too. We, there were, for the whole first half we were so on top of wolves in the premier league just holding them down and playing this uh, incredible football and like that Ail- Ailing was, was a, a winger joy. we played with wingers we just we didn't play with fullbacks we played with wingers we yeah. just attacked them we went for them I mean, there was a great bit of analysis uh, by all stats aren't we because I signed up to their Patreon because I I just love their content. Mm. And it showed how Leeds actually just vacated the centre of the park. Yeah. And they had four players in the first half marking absolutely no one. We had yeah. Calvin in the pivot just, just dropping deep. And then it, and we just went width. Yeah. And we'd, we'd bypass the midfield, not always vertically, but horizontally a lot of the time. We'd, we'd switch play. And they, they got to grips with that in the second half. They were also very deep in the mm. first half and allowed us to come on. Uh, and then in the second half, they also started to drop deep again and allowed yeah. us that domination. It's like, it's breaking for straight. I think we said that. Well, that's your catchphrase. It, you is like it, it with, was yeah. breaking for straight. It was for straight and break. I think it goes, yeah. isn't it? For straight and break. And they, they, uh, they had, I think we deserve, I think it was a draw was a fair result. Yeah, I think so too. Because they, um, they, they, they had chances. They had chances and they set up in order to play that way. Yeah, you know, they like, did. And like you said, that extra bit of quality up top. Yeah, they were, they were impressive. But like, they'll do really well this season. Got to say though, 
Adama Traore getting oiled up. That was weird, wasn't well, it? Well, he always does. It's, it makes him impossible to grab. Yeah, you can't grab his slip. It's a yeah, slippery yeah, yeah. customer, literally. Yeah, Stuart Dallas took oh, no. care of him. He was like, he doesn't care how oiled you are. He's he getting just you. get out of the way. I know. And he did a really good tackle on him that yeah. got given a foul as well. It wasn't a foul. It was just a great tackle. But it just shows he'll stand up to anyone. You I, know? Honestly, Stuart Dallas, the emergence of Stuart Dallas as a top Premier League player has really surprised me. Yeah. I thought he'd struggle yeah, to, to maintain too. a place in that in the Premier League Anytime you doubt Stuart Dallas, you are wrong. Is and what we're learning. Yeah, I, I think he's almost the first name on the team oh, sheet. massively at the moment. We've got to mention our talisman, our favourite player, perhaps, if you're, particularly if you're, from, if you're from Leeds, the work the lad Calvin Phillips out for six weeks. Yeah, that's a, that's a real loss. Um, it, you know, I think we'll cope, strike up, play well. There. It's an opportunity for another player. But, we always talk about the system. But, you know, we, we, we're obviously going to lose Calvin. So that that was that. So we move on anyway. It was a 1-0 loss. These will happen. Who cares? On we go. Great on to the enjoyment, next one. I thought. Yeah. And Spectacle. As, uh, so as of recording, we haven't played Villa yet, just to let you know. So fingers crossed. Um, oh, yeah, God. It's been, uh, to be honest with you, it's been an abject week in the week of Bielsa. For the Bielsa clubs. We're not clubs. focused on victories, though, are we? No. It's so, not about victories. It's about the process. Yeah. So I hope all the other teams had some good process this week because the results. <laughs> Fucking shite. Absolutely <laughs> awful. So Marseille lost to Olympiacos in the Champions League in the group stage. So that's uh, it's got in. Olympiacos is one you'd hope to win, I think. Yeah, as well. it is. They're, they're the whipping boys of the, of the Champions League. Turns they? out, apparently not. No, um, not. Not if you're Marseille. So, the yeah, so that that's a bit gutting. Uh, Athletic lost to Levante 2 0. Yeah. Oh no! Uh, no, they beat no, the beat, uh, they beat Sorry, them. I've got that written down the wrong way. That was the one good result this oh, week. Oh yeah, well done, Athletic. Bilbao. And they're up to thirteenth or fourteenth now. They've had a bad start, but they're turning it round. So yeah. well done, yeah. Club Athletic. The one bright spot this week because uh, a real, real stinger. Uh, Atlas lost to Guadalajara, and that's in their <sighs> local derby. Local it's, derby. In case mate. you didn't know, it's Atlas Guadalajara, and they were playing Guadalajara FC, and uh, Guadalajara won three two. So. But there's some positive news from Atlas. Where the, where... Oh yeah, there is. Um, I don't know if anyone's seen this on the internet this week. Uh, Atlas have released a gorgeous kit to oh. celebrate, um, like you know, the Mexican Day of the Dead. Yeah, what is it? Dios del Muerte. Or something yeah, the like. Day of the Dead. Oh, yeah. I, I, there's a film about it. Uh, it's a cartoon that my daughter watches. Yeah, it's really good actually. I love it as well. I don't think that's the main point about the Day of the Dead, but you know, it's... yeah, I completely missed the main <laughs> point. I don't know. It's just dead people in a cartoon. For yeah, me. but like uh, they've released a, a kit. I'll pop it up on screen if you're watching the YouTube, and it's so nice. So get yourself one of those if you want to yeah. treat yourself. And they've got um, face paint on it. Yeah, and it gave me a thought. Can you imagine if if all players as well face paint and, and, and you're like they could dress up as like the favourite kind of character and it'd be yeah, if it's just scoring think, a goal it's like like Darth Maul like, I don't think there's a rule against it no there isn't is there I don't get some so. face paint on go as a superhero turn up looking like Gene Simmons from Kiss <laughs> can you imagine if they came out as the Simpsons just <laughs> yellowed up <laughs> I don't think you can do that anymore. <laughs> no, you probably can. You probably can. <laughs> be amazing though if one of them comes out as like a tiger or like got like yeah. a butterfly. <laughs> yeah, just go with like a, a little like five year old party kind of like just just before they go out butterflies. I I go like go faster stripes and zigzaggy lines like David Bowie. Yeah, yeah, that would be a good one. It's just yeah, I mean that would, it would make football more interesting. Get on it, football! Pull your finger out. Face Get paint. some face paint on. Anyway, we've got to finish this wrap up of the games. Uh, Club America also lost to Leon, so that's another oh, terrible one. We, we won't dwell on the results too much this week because they're all pretty bad. Except uh, Newell's uh, had a, f a friendly finally. They're finally back and playing. They had a friendly against River Plate and 1 2 1, so that's great. Brilliant. Their first game is coming up on the 1st of November. So everyone in the UK um, it is on UK telly. I'll tweet out where it is on the Bielsa Bible account. I can't remember right now. They are behind us. So it's four hours behind, are they? Yeah, so it'll be late in the night, um, but like we can watch it on telly. And their first game against Talleres Cordoba, and Cordoba is the city where Marcelo played for Instituto. Oh, wow. Um, so yeah, like I think there might be a local rival, someone can tell us. Anyway, that's the first game coming up for New Wells, and also Velez have their first game against Huracan, um, same day, on the first. So let's look out for those, and Good let's luck. get behind New Wells, everyone in the UK. I'm Unless... dead excited for the season to start for New Wells. We mm. hope you absolutely smash it, obviously. Um, so there we go, let's move on from this. It's been miserable this week, apart from uh, Bilbao and, you know, that friendly for uh, Newell's. So apart from that terrible week, let's forget about it. Let's never mention this again. If you are enjoying this podcast and you'd like to help us with our endeavours, which are plentiful, you can do so by joining us on Patreon. 
It's at patreon.com forward slash the Bielsa Bible. And this is the future of the internet, really, Patreon, helping your artists, supporting them. So please do. And I know for a fact, it's not the money, it's the time. It's the time. The, the lowest Patreon is £3 a month. That's 75 pence an episode. So it's a two minutes. I'm asking for two minutes of your time. Please get on there, support us. If uh, friends of ours have got a, pay, uh, a great podcast and they've got a thousand people on Patreon, if we had a thousand people on Patreon, we'd be in Rosario making a documentary for you. We're going to reinvest it. So please, yeah. please get on there. And, it is and an support investment, us. isn't it? Like, this is it. Like, um, it's basically, if you want some extras, we've got, like, we're not just asking for your money. We're giving you stuff for it, right? Um, this will always be free. This, uh, the main show don't worry about that but over on patreon we put up all the extended interviews that you see clips of we're also going to put up eventually we'll do some things like uh, we'll do uh, like bonus streams, material bonus material stuff like that we want to free merch as well like there's all different perks that you can choose the level you want to be at um and yeah basically that keeps us going uh, this is our job so you know we've got some extra stuff for you yeah just do it i've got kids <laughs> And now we go to look at our Saint of the Week. Saint of the Week. Saint of the Week. So this week we've had actually loads of nominations. It's mm. been a very saintly week. Um, yeah, it has actually. It's been lovely. If, you, if you're new to the podcast, this is the part of the show where we uh, induct a saint of the week, someone who has espoused the values of Marcelo Bielsa, someone who has lived the values of Bielsism and... Put it into in practice. Exactly. The values of Bielsa. Exactly. Yeah. Whether they are directly inspired by Bielsa or not, just something that Bielsa would improve approve of. So yeah. this week, I think we have an incredibly worthy one. Now, um, to give context for anyone who's not in the UK, the Premier League at the moment has trialled a new thing of basically pay-per-view games. So on top of everyone's subscriptions to whatever services they already have to get in order to watch the matches... There are now, for certain games, a £15 charge just to watch the match. And bear in mind, you can't share that because we can't mix households because of, you know, the world situation. I mean, so £15? It's absolutely absurd. I can't believe it's that much. It's uh, like, it, you know, it, it's so much money for one game to watch at £14.95, I think they went with in the Oh, end, well, you know, it makes all the world a difference, doesn't I, it? I, it? It's so greedy. Yeah, it it's is so, so much. And this is a dangerous precedent and it's yeah. really good to see that fans are uniting and they are fighting back yeah in a really beautiful way and uh we this was started by newcastle united fans yeah. what happened was in rather than paying the 15 pounds what everyone is committed to do is paying the 15 pounds to a local food bank charity in newcastle was what they were doing and paying that money there and then just pirating the game <laughs> And and it's they've raised a, a load of money. I can't remember the exact amount, but it was around fifteen thousand. I think it, was it might 15, be more. Sixteen thousand, a lot think, of money. I think it, it's probably gone up and yeah, up. yeah, it's uh, growing it's constantly. Again, the, the, this you know this initiative's been shared and, and mm. more people have found out about it. And the Geordies have done brilliant, they're absolutely amazing. And they really, I mean, they are the first team to do it. Yeah, and, that, and it's such a beautiful idea. Yeah, it is. And like now, what's really beautiful is Leeds fans have joined in. And, yeah. um, you know, Leeds fans take more. And we're trying to we raise... We pay even... more, don't we? We exactly. raise more. So we're trying to raise even more because the Leeds Villa game is uh, on this pay-per-view. And um, look, I think we very much endorse the message of... We know, really do. Well, last time I checked, we were on £15,000 for yeah, a food bank. absolutely smashing it. And the LUFC Trust, let's give them a mention. They're trying mm. to raise £50,000. I think they're really close to it now. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's just... That is brilliant. It's, it's a, beautiful. A, a, time, a desperate time. We've got... This Marcus Rashford last week, yeah. who was feeding hungry kids. These food banks are going to do the same thing. Yeah, and, and like people are really struggling right now. They so really are. The fact that they, there is, um, you know, such a beautiful movement that can help that comes from something crap basically you know and like commercialized and awful and stealing the soul of the game which is going to be a topic we're going to return to in the sermon today and, so, and this is the beautiful side of the game the beautiful game the exactly. people the fans Us. giving yeah and, and football fans often get um criticized mm. for being louts and and whatnot or i do when i'm in town <laughs> oh, you fucking natter uh get, get your gloves on come on <laughs> and then um, yeah, but th this is this is football fans uniting and doing exactly. something so positive and so beautiful. So, 
really well done to Newcastle United. And, yeah. and I think it's the idea, it's the inception of that idea. Mm. And they've inspired Leeds. And I'm hoping that other clubs will follow suit. Yeah. I think AF, uh, Aston Villa FC yeah. have uh, done something very similar. They, oh, they, 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 uh, some of this is the Camden Trust or something. So it looks like every every team, because of what Newcastle fans have done, yeah. every team, I think, now is, is, is it's almost a competition, isn't it? Who yeah. can be the nicest? And, it's absolutely and what a great competition it is. Brilliant. Yeah, we absolutely love it. So our Saint of the Week, it's going to all Newcastle United fans. It's going to you. Yeah, and particularly the person or the people that had this idea. Yeah. Well done. And thank you so much to, to the Geordies. You've you've been amazing. Why and I to every one of you. Why I, man. And women. <laughs> <laughs> If you are watching this on YouTube and seeing the merch and thinking, oh my God, I want some of that. If you are listening to this podcast and thinking, wow, I would like some merch for no reason at There's all. There's the sound of merch. We've got merch and these mugs are amazing. And I'm not talking about me and Rob. <laughs> uh, Rob, can you uh, enlighten us further about merch? Yeah, we've got all sorts of stuff available. We've got t-shirts, we've got mugs, we've got stickers, we've got these cushions with the Lord's Prayer on the yes. back. The mugs have got the Lord's Prayer on the back. All sorts of stuff. Basically, if you go to the Bielsa Bible, dot com forward slash shop you can check it out there we've also we've had a bit of a price reduction on the t-shirts um basically right i've run my mouth in the past about the quality of gildan t-shirts and it turns out i was massively ill-informed really yeah i bought one um that turned out to be a gildan t-shirt it was dead nice and it turns out that's a bit cheaper than the product we were using before so I've now changed our stock over to be on uh, these Gildan soft style ring spun cotton. Honestly, yeah, top that's it. That, that's it's all about the ring spun cotton. Exactly. I'm wearing the Bielsa t-shirt again. It's just, it's just nice. It's getting better with age. This is it. That's what ring spun like cotton me. does. So because it was a little bit cheaper for us, we're just passing that straight on to you. So there's been a slight reduction there. Um, they are currently 22 quid with free postage worldwide, and they've got full color print in front and back. There's a oh. big, massive Bielsa Bible logo on the back. Check them out on the website. So they're a little bit cheaper now. So hopefully that'll They are the best t-shirts in the market. I think that is true. That is a fact. So check them out there. Bielsabible.com forward slash shop. I've got kids. <laughs> so now we'll go to today's sermon. And before we do, as always, let us recite the Lord's Prayer. <clears throat> Our, Our Father, who, who art, art from New Wells, Marcelo be, be thy name. name. Our king has come, thy will be done, on the pitch as it is in training. Give us each day our daily nutritionally balanced meal, and forgive us our bad passes, as we dispossess those who pass badly against us. Leeds' man-marking rotation has delivered us from EFL, for thine is the high line, the power and the running. Forever and ever, vamos, Bielsa, carajo. I went with a, a different approach, so I, I, a bit like kind of more, um, a bit deeper and a, and a yeah. bit more monotone. It was nice. I liked it. It gave it that sort of Gregorian monk feel. Yeah, that, thanks, mate. Yeah, that, well, we know that Beelzebub is very monk-like. He is. Been, uh, so very, very apt. Monasterian in his approach to life. I just made that word up. <laughs> I know, I could tell. <laughs> <laughs> is it a word? No. It is now. But uh, yeah, for anyone who's trying to follow along in a second language, I apologise. Uh, he's not making sense in his first one. Uh, but this well, there, is a, there isn't really a second one, I'll be honest with you. Mate. <laughs> this, so today, our sermon today, we wanted to talk a little bit about the issue of club ownership because it's a big topic at the moment and there's a, a lot of big moves that club owners are trying to make in UK football particularly and um, we wanted to talk about Bielsa's relationship to the idea of the ownership of football clubs and uh, his relationship with owners of various clubs yeah which has been fractious is that a word yeah i think so i think uh, that one is fractious 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 fractious, fractious. fractious. it's been a bit yeah. shit at times yeah there we go <laughs> so do you know what doing a bit of digging and, and mm. speaking to, the, to argentinians they approach football ownership totally mm -hmm. different to what we do in england and it's something that's never really i've never really considered they don't like the idea of private individuals owning a football club to them it's totally alien to us we've we've accept, we've accepted it yeah it's just totally normal in britain um but we have a perfect example we have an argentinian fan explain yeah we have us. jose uh, i'm not quite sure how ignacio to, ignacio i think is, is his surname but jose's spoken to us from his car <laughs> yeah he sent us a little message on the um yeah on the argentinian concept of club ownership let's have a little look what he's got to say hi miki hi Mates, this is Jose Ignacio from Argentina. 
And in today's video, I would like to express my personal opinion and will try to express the, the Argentinian football fans' opinion about um, clubs' ownership because uh, this topic is, is, is known here because we discuss a lot um, because we have a, a different vision or a different approach to see this, this topic. First of all, I would like just to describe a little bit the way that our football clubs um, are managed here because um, our football clubs are like uh, social clubs which are managed by a president we don't have owners our president uh, the presidents are elected or, or chosen by the, the members of the club the clubs football clubs belong to to their members which are the fans the football fans pay a membership uh, in each club and they are able to use the, the club facilities and of course they are able to choose the president every four years for instance um, the, the, of course there are pros and cons advantage and disadvantages about uh, the, the different ways or approaches to manage a club in my personal opinion I think that uh, a good or bad uh, management uh, doesn't depend on the the, the way uh, I mean if uh, it is an, an owner or or a president but I would like to, to, to express the, the Argentinian fans opinion about this um, here in Argentina could be unacceptable that a club could be bought by a by, a, by a, an owner uh, which in most of the cases a missionary uh, who only want to increase their fortune um well it's very nice of ignacio to send us that in between takes on hosting the argentinian version of cash cab <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks, Jose, no, for that. Brilliant. And you know what? It, it opened my eyes to a new way of looking at club ownership. Mm. And to them, it's really, it's disgraceful, despicable that, that the fans, the clubs don't belong to the fans. The fans yeah. don't own the club. How can a club be bought? It's no, a good I, point. I, I totally agree with it. Um, it it's, does feel mad. And especially like, look, as a Leeds fan, we have seen what can happen when someone oh, with... God scurrilous intent buys your club you, we, we you nearly know, folded mate like uh, they, they took everything the closest i've ever come from walking away from Leeds united and not going anymore and not watching it was under ken bates because it just felt bleak and me felt too like... i did i went to, i started watching um i started watching guysley mm. it's a pretty funny story actually i'll just i'll just segue into it I started watching guys because ben parker was yeah. playing for him and my mate is good and really good mates with ben and he got us in free, and it's like it's great. And then uh, <laughs> I was well pissed up on the uh, on the touchline. You can get quite close to him, you know. It's not like a non because it's non league, and they, they were play I think they're playing the sixth tier then, so decent standard. And uh, I'm, I started uh, really taking the piss out of their right back, right, really badly, really. <laughs> and, and I kept it going, and I got some chance going, and I, it was really it was merciless, right. And uh, the whole stand started following me with his chance, and it was it was really funny, right. And the game was nil nil. And then and he, this I can't remember his name. I'll get it for next week because Miffy still remembers it. Yeah. He's he's now moved up the leagues. And he's playing professional football, and I think in, in, I think he's playing for the League One club. I can't yeah. remember his name. So I literally I'm go with it. I'm pissed up. I'm flowing and I'm every every chant I start I've got the whole Geisley stand behind me and everyone's just laughing and slapping on the back he puts in I'm not joking it was a 35 yard screamer it won the game it was in about the 88th minute and he literally ran towards me going yeah, <laughs> yeah! And, and the whole stand just, I felt like the loneliest person in the world everyone was like fuck sakes and uh, everyone it, all this like uh, all this banter just disappeared and I, 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 I walked home really depressed about what I'd done <laughs> He totally oh, owned me, man. I mean, that's ownership. That guy go. owned me. He owned you. But yeah, I that's did hilarious. walk away from the club a little bit because it yeah. was just like they don't care about us. What, what yeah, were they milking us? It here? felt hollow. I was paying. I was uh, at that point as well. I was going home and away every game, and I was spending so much money in the club, and like the tickets were so expensive. And then to just have 
it's having no say in the the decision making at your club and the, yeah. no say in the future of it and i think there is a lot that's really beautiful about the argentinian model um obviously look there are you know there are advantages to the english model we get to pay extraordinary wages which means we get the best talent from around the world playing in the english league yeah but to be honest i would be quite happy watching <laughs> players getting paid 30 grand a week you know i think yeah, but that, that's right. only the premier league what about mm. the rest of the football pyramid they're yeah. not in the premier league and also like we've got teams folding now mm. we've got clubs folding uh, this is a really serious issue mm. i'll go, go back to what jose was saying like you know you, you, as a fan you pay your membership you're involved you're part of it you the club is you and you are the club yeah. and that's how it should be well, he also, he also said that, that they could use the facilities which kind yeah. of like piques my interest it's like what do you think go down the gym and yeah. just like you know just to hang around the players we could go have a swim at thor park yeah it'd be nice, yeah, be nice to alioski in the pool yeah can you imagine all the women just hanging around like you know <laughs> they, they would like be pumping oh. out like this is what you could be getting boys look at this <laughs> I, would, I would be to be honest i with. would be as well but yeah. would just have a harem of women <laughs> around, wouldn't it? Just, uh, yeah no it is just um, the players i'm just saying using the facilities it's my club as well so uh <laughs> well yeah you were a bit shit on saturday weren't you but <laughs> like it feels like a more honest way of running a club because you know it's not a, a commercial business in a, a strict sense because like a normal the normal way capitalism works is yeah. if you don't like a product if you don't like what's going on with a company you, you don't, don't buy it you don't buy it you by their competitor but that relies on there being competition and this is where it falls down with football clubs because there is no competition to Leeds united in my heart no it doesn't you matter know. how badly you run a football club how much you rip the fans off they keep buying your products exactly and, and, and owners know this mm -hmm. and, and they, they play on that yeah and very wealthy individuals are using football clubs to become even more wealthy and not mm. just that it's not just the the ripping off of the fans it's really good for business if you mm. can if you can wine and dine clients at your football club yeah it makes for really good business deals and that's what's happening with off the back we've seen i, I have to say as a precursor to this that, that our current owner has been the best one we've had in a long time fantastic yeah but he's but let's think about that john john richardson was saying he, he didn't want to go and watch Leeds because mm. of the Myanmar. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and what what does Rad's took leads around Myanmar making business deals? Yeah, and it, it's it's when you, it's it's at that point you see like the real grotesque underbelly of like the sort of um, deeply capitalist heart of it. And mm. like, look, I'm I'm not like a I'm not like a communist hippie, but I feel like you know that there are the the essential soul of the game should be ours. We own it. It's our game. Yeah, know? it's a very socialist ideal for the mm. people to own. It's put it's public ownership versus private ownership though, completely. Isn't it? And like, look, this is um this. This is an area where I think we fall down a little bit in British fandom. We spoke to Henry Winter mm. recently. He's a journalist from the Times, really respected journalist. And great bloke. We had a really nice time chatting. He was lovely. And yeah. he, and, and and one thing I will say about Henry is he had a real passion for football and real passion yeah. for people. He, he, we, we'd never met him and he was interested yeah. in what we had to say. And yeah, he asked me about teaching. Yeah, he did. And, and like he was asking us questions about Yeah, leads. it seemed like he's got such a passion and desire for, for football. What I enjoyed as well, he's got a bit of steel as well. He didn't roll over with our questions. He fought back on us a Yeah, he did times, a bit. We'll show those at some point. I, yeah. I enjoyed that. Um, but he had this to say about um, like English fans' relationship to fan ownership. I think that fans in this country are not militants enough. Mm -hmm. I, I grew up in, in Germany and supported Bayern Munich as a kid. I was out there at school. And uh, so my parents took me out of school in London and chucked me at school in, in, in Germany just to sort of learn another culture. And, you know, the Bayern Munich fans were pretty militant then. They're even more now. Uh, Dortmund fans, you look at their yeah. model, I like the 50 plus one, that's never going to come back into English football. Yeah. But I think fans over here, I think fans over here are very good at looking inwards and fighting individual causes at their club. But actually, you know, I, the Football Supporters Association do a great job, but I, but I also think that at some point, the clubs, uh, the fans all have to get together. And it's actually, sorry, it happened the other day with the, uh, the all the supporters trusts of the, the so-called big six. Uh, they also basically told their owners, we do not want uh, project big picture. Mm -hmm. But I do think fans, you know, it's your game. It, it doesn't, it doesn't belong to Joel Glazer yeah. and it doesn't belong to Andrew Rajatani, even though he is a genuine football fan mm -hmm. and he is, you know, it's, it's, it's still a business. You know, you will be at, Ellen Road, going into the church, taking up your, you know, seat in the pews when Andrea has moved on mm -hmm. and he would, he's doing a fantastic job and he's put you back on the rights. Everything he's done has been right. Yeah. One of the things he doesn't get credit for, which I, which I'm really pleased that Bielsa is certainly looking at tapping into is the academy. 
I'm a huge fan of academies, partly because I cover the national team, but partly because I think for the financial health of a of a club, I think it's absolutely vital. You know, and I was fortunate to cover the sort, you know, the Robinsons and the Woodgates and the Smiths when they when they all emerged and sort of got to know them and their families. And actually, it just gives a real buzz to to, to a club. So I think Rajasthan is 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 doing fantastically. But remember, ultimately, emotionally, the supporters own it. You're going to be the ones who are there in the bad times. The owners won't always be. They may well have sold up. Rajasthan is obviously here for a longer term. He's, he's slightly different. So coming back to your, your central question, I think that bielsa Rajasani combination, I, I think it works because I think Rajasani realised he's got someone special, but he's yeah. not on the phone to him 10 times a day. And that's important, I think, for Bielsa. I think what Henry said at the start was great. English fans, or British fans, were not militant enough. Yeah, and that's it. Like we were saying about, we're good at fighting issues within our own club. Like when we had, like, Bates Out protests at Leeds, like the Ashley Out stuff at Newcastle. Yeah, the Newcastle fans who have done such a good job with Centre of the Week. They, they, yeah. they, 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 Ashley's really... I mean, people are... The, He's the, the perfect is, example Yeah, of they, they love owner. the football up there. Mm. They've been boycotting games. Yeah. And and they've been turning on each other because scabs have been going. But how mm. do you not go to your club? I know. So it's, it's an offensive stadium. And, and, it, and you're thinking to yourself, wow, they hate that guy and he has rinsed them. Yeah, but, like, that that's what the bit... Does, that we're quite good at we do fight those but i think the the point he's making is more about like the the overall big issues within football that we tend to sort of leave alone a bit especially at the moment like there are such power grabs being made in f world football mm. especially in european football with the idea of like the project big six in the premier league what was it project something or other big picture was big it? picture that's the one where basically it was just like oh we're the rich clubs and we want all the money and then there's this idea of the european super league has come back again which always goes around and it's just a classic idea that is just based on the greed of owners it doesn't enrich the game it doesn't make the game more interesting it doesn't make the game more beautiful for fans it doesn't help a fan in any single way all it does is line the pockets of billionaires yeah, and rips, we need to fight it it rips out the soul of each nation mm. really you know the, the the english clubs if we if our big six in inverted commas were to leave then mm. you know we're not gonna have that man united derby oh, that but they're sounds gonna be, great though yeah. to be fair i'd love them to piss off to a league that fails <laughs> yeah they would maybe bottom of the league every day might be, not be a bad idea well, that's but, it. but yeah they, they, this, they, they want this big super league to happen mm. this big european super league they've, they've been planning it for years and it's come out of the woodwork now they've, they've, had, they've had a go at a power grab i have no doubt it will come back again mm. and it's everything that's wrong with football the champions yeah. league is fine as it is it's grown so much from the european cup it's a great spectacle a great competition but let's keep let's keep the the English football such a rich tapestry. Yeah. We want to and keep not it just that English, way. Spanish, and French, and yeah. German all all, all across Europe is a terrible yeah. idea. It's a terrible idea, and it's all about local derbies. Mm. It's football, it's about representing the area you're from. And like the, what I think it fundamentally misses as well is uh, the what makes European football great is like the rarity. It's yeah. like playing teams that would not normally play each other. That's, That's what right. makes it exciting. Whereas if they're playing each other every week, who cares? Surely they'd be playing each other like yeah, it's just boring oh, it's, uh, Real Madrid and versus they weren't going to have like what really whatever. sticks in the craw is there's no promotion there's no relegation it's just, yeah. we are these special clubs and also like how can you claim to have a European Super League that doesn't feature like Ajax yeah like it's 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 laughable it like, is laughable how they've chosen these teams the whole thing man city are apparently one of the like you've been rich for a decade yeah. let's not forget that you were crap for che 700 think, think, years before yeah that. chelsea's 2004 they were founded exactly I think, and like man you are 16th in the bloody league like why are they getting it you know it's, yeah i think it's impossible if it ever does happen then then really the soul of the game it will happen out. it'll happen at some point and it'll be terrible but like this is the sort of thing that we need to fight we need, we need to fight to and it unite. was a militant we need to, we need be... to unite together as football fans to yeah do we this. do and try and save our clubs so trying to change a culture that's kind of like bedded into mm. uh english football british football it's, it's difficult what can fans achieve i asked probably my favorite analysis guy mm -hmm. anal analysisist whatever they're called anal anal what are analysis they called? Anal that was fractious analyst analyst, analyst. That's Jesus, you're making me get it wrong <laughs> yeah fucking, it's always a fucking words <laughs> but john mckenzie who works for all stats aren't we and he's amazing I, I just i can't get enough of john i'm one of his big fans and uh, i asked him to do a video and uh, today and he got back with this i think it's really interesting yeah 
Hi guys, it's John McKenzie here. Mickey's just asked me to make a video about fan culture because he saw that I have put out a podcast this week for Football Today which asked the question, is there the possibility of a more active fan culture in the UK right now? We've never seen, um, I think, a more negative um, reaction to football than we have in the last few weeks with things like the pay-per-view scandal and things like the Project Big Picture uh, response to the coronavirus pandemic and, and how that's going to influence football. Um, so Mickey asked me to just maybe relate this these sorts of topics to particularly Leeds United. Before I get to Leeds, I want to talk about the more general situation that has, I think, led to um, what we're seeing happening within fan bases right now in the UK in particular. Um, and that is what I like to call a clientele shift. What we've seen in the last few decades has been a huge influx of money into the the modern game and what's happened is that clubs are now i think shifting the clientele that they're aiming to attract um and so this is having an interesting impact on fan bases so if you think about it in the past obviously football clubs grew up in the local areas you would um, build up a community of, of fans who would come along to your games. Um, if you think about Elland Road, it's got a capacity of about 37 or 38,000 at the moment. Um, you could treat that as your fan base, that 38, 39,000 people and within reason, you know, plus and minus the people who are going to be fluctuating through the doors at Elland Road. Or if there's more money in the, in, in the game, you want to try and get as big an audience as possible. And to achieve that, then you have to uh, expand your, um, your audience. You have to make your audience global. And what we're seeing is this, this clientele shift, as I've called it, from local fans to a global audience where you can get people watching television um, get the get people supporting your club uh, and use them as, as a as a grown market we've seen obviously clubs for years now going out to uh, various far-flung places to try and boost their fan base in this way but this the result of this clientele shift is quite interesting because once you take your audience from being a localized community of people who will be going through the gates of your football stadium what happens um, when you go to that global audience then is that football changes a little bit. The relationship between the club and the fan base changes a little bit. And uh, I think football becomes more of a spectacular um, in the classic sense of the term. So something that you go along and see, you go into, for example, the theatre and watch the play. You go to the cinema and watch the screen. You uh, enjoy the entertainment and then you leave. And I think that's slowly uh, eroding what what has been traditionally the way that um clubs have functioned for fans as, as sort of community hubs, um, as as really meaningful institutions that uh, give their lives meaning, but also give meaning to the communities within which they're based. Now, obviously, it's it may sound highly critical for me to be complaining about this at a point in time when to be a Leeds United fan is never probably been better. But you can even see, I think, in the, the last few years, the, the way that the football club has, has moved into that sort of um, global TV audience. Because so much of what we enjoy about the football club now is based around what's happening on the field. What is, again, to come back to it, that sort of spectacular element where we're looking at the way that, um, that we can be entertained by football rather than uh, football. Uh, functioning as a, a more meaningful institution in our lives. Now, that's not to say that for Leeds United there aren't those great community um, outlets that people are using to to make the the, the club uh, the, the focal point of, of something like a uh, a group of people who can help one another. And it's been great seeing what the LU um, FC Trust have been doing with the PPV um, uh, money. Uh, great pop shield. There, wasn't it? I love that pop shield from John and what a great video, what some great points he's made. Yeah, really the, interesting. The, it's become the spectacular. And just to, I, I was, um, I'm going to bring up something else from The Athletic, mm. uh, something I subscribe to and pay money to every month. <clears throat> uh, but they've just mentioned here, I want to read it very quickly, the Premier League is awash with American cash with Arsenal, Aston Villa, Crystal Palace, Fulham, Leeds, Liverpool, Manchester United and West Ham all owned or part owned by US citizens. And I love that the fact that they are citizens mm. the, the, ind the individuals that own they are owning a, a huge amount of, of Premier League clubs mm. and this is important for Bielsa because I think this is he stands for this community what John was talking about he stands for the amateur spirit in football and yeah. it, he's always tried to put that into his clubs and it does feel like yeah a, like 
English football is getting more of that uh, rampant American capitalism, which is very much it feels it feels at odds with Bielsa's ideals of sport. There's certainly. a huge clash here, and this is it. And this is why we're discussing this today. Uh, yeah. you, you know, like if you were scratching your heads, how does this relate to Bielsa? Well, this is an issue that Bielsa feels very deeply, and his connection with the fans is the most important thing to him. And it's certainly not money. It's I I think that, that we, we set up uh, Jose at first to try and get uh, an impression of how Bielsa approaches mm. club owners before we delve into uh, the conflict, the possible future conflict as well with Leeds United, yeah. with this idea of, like you said, rampant American vulture capitalism that, that has entered the game. Bielsa's it's not like we don't have it in Britain, but like there, there is a, just another level up. So in order to um, explore this relationship, though, we spoke to our good friend Mariano. Oh, we love Mariano. Absolutely what brilliant. New Wales Old Boys fan, uh, knowledgeable as anything. And he had this to say about how Marcelo might re relate to owners in the UK and that ownership model. When he quit Univers Universidad uh, de Buenos Aires, his first uh, job as a university coach, he left the same year, 1982, because the, he was saying the university is not giving me what I'm asking for. He's not they're not giving me the necessary tools to work. Is that very different from what he did in Lazio? No. Mm -hmm. no or at no. Lille, or, you know, like there's, there's loads yes. of times through his career he's done that. And um... so. Universidad de Buenos Aires, Amateur, or Lille, or Lazio, same thing. Mm. That's what makes me think he might stay at Leeds a little bit longer because I think the owner knows and he we, knows that he's got to keep this man happy. We know how good we've got it at Leeds, I think. I think we're all very aware that we've got a special manager and it, if, from the board Yeah, down. I, I think Bielsa asks for it and he'll get it. I, I, I think, and, he's, and, and Bielsa's not going to ask for loads of money. He, now, he's he going to do that. I'm going to tell you something from the perspective of an Argentine who belongs to a, a football tradition where there are no owners, mm. okay? I, I'm, I'm, you have to understand that he's very much aware that he's working in the Mecca in Europe of management, okay? Where uh, uh, the management of owners, owners manage that and, and he knows at the back of his mind he has had to reconcile with that idea that he's going to be working with the boss and in Athletic Bilbao he he talked about uh the fact that he was working for a boss an owner he always pointed this out okay um as as he was talking to the press and to the people through the press and he was talking about the owner with the owner next to him. He's very much aware of this vertical relationship. And you 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 fans can make him very happy for forever and ever. But if there is a problem where he has a miscommunication of some sort or where he reads something that is wrong about owner uh, ownership, he is taking off mm -hmm. for sure i'm not going to talk about Radizani on camera and <laughs> there's not you know so much that he could there's nothing that you could really accuse him of mm. but i'm going to say that marcelo is very much aware that he works for owners yeah and that he is sleeping with the devil in terms of the, what the model of football is, yeah, he's sure. sleeping with the devil, and that's the part of where he has he is self-flagellating every night, knowing that he works for corporate football. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is definitely going through his mind. I don't see anybody talking about this, but from the perspective of an Argentine who, who you know, roots for a team that's not owned, he's aware of that. So we're talking about it, Mariano. There you go. And like that is a thing. This is um, the thing that I th worries me a little bit with the long term of Bielsa is that I don't think he enjoys the ownership model. I mean, he's found an owner that he can work with. I mean, Radrazani, you know, he, he's giving him what he wants. But still, if you're getting what you want off some, you know, a, a business interest you don't want to be involved with. I think we all live with the possibility of Bielsa going at any time. Mm. We, we've seen it before in other clubs. And although his relationship with Leeds does feel special, we've been told mm. uh, from South America that it is special, it's different, it's unique. There's still that friction. There's still the possibility he could go. And 
he could walk. Well, this is it. And like there is, um, we talked to Tim Rich about this. Uh, Tim Rich, the bio- biographer of BLC, wrote uh, A Quality of Madness, if you've seen that. Um, and yeah, we spoke to him about the possibility of Bielsa leaving over this issue. The one constant thing about Bielsa is he's okay to work with. He's never, he's never brilliant to work with, with but he's, he's good to work with on his terms, providing you don't cross it. Mm. Or you think you'll be, he, he, you think you've got a huge sense of justice. And he, once he signs a contract, he signs a contract. And so, for example, it went wrong with him at Marseille because Marseille, had to, having signed the contract with him for a second season, then tried to change it. And he said, no, 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 you, I've signed the contract. You can't even change it halfway through. And he walks out of Marseille after a single game. He goes to Lazio, which was a fantastic appointment since we've seen Bills in Serie A, you know. And then he says, he gives him a list of players and he says, right, you've got to sign these players by a certain date and I'll come over and start coaching them. And then they say, well, we signed none of the players so far. And then he just walks out after two days and he hasn't signed any of my players. I can't, I can't, I can't work with you. And I think one of the one of the, um, one of the great things about Leeds United, um, if he completes this season, he will spend longer at Leeds than any other club, even Newell's old boys. Mm. He will spend, you know, as, as manager. And I think that that sounds a great deal. We talk a lot about the cynicism of English football, but I think you know, and I know Redrazani has said, oh, he's difficult to work with, uh, but he, which I think might be an understatement, but. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he has stuck at it. He stuck at it with Leeds. I think Leeds have, have more kept their side of the bargain, and certainly the fans have kept their side of the bargain. And I think the only the only false move that uh, the chairman made was fishing around for Ibrahimovic mm. in the uh, January transfer window. And I, I think uh, Bielsa, as you may remember, said he was very surprised that Ibrahimovic had been offered a. A position at Leeds because mm. uh, he he is the last you know he, if you had an archetypal BL to play it would not be Zlatan uh, no. thirty eight coming for a huge wad of money <laughs> <laughs> and being the lone star yeah, yeah there's, no, so there's no individuals yeah it's really so opposite to his the, ideals yeah so I think that's the only mistake really the board have made you know mm. other other than that you know they, they, they've let them get on with it. Um, you know, which 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 they didn't do it, which they didn't do in Marseille. Um, certainly, uh, Marseille, uh, that their, their their chairman guy called Vincent Le Brun was a great one for selecting his own players and imposing them on uh, Bielsa, which Bielsa got more and more angry with, and then just left. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think Bill Bow's mistake was they redesigned the training ground uh, without telling him. And, oh. God. That's such what a crime doing? to Bielsa. That's his. What are you doing? <laughs> He's don't obsessed with a... the training ground. It's like don't his even whole move thing. A plug socket. Yeah. Like, that's the rule. Don't do anything unless he's unless he's bloody yes. planned it. Yes. Oh no, no, no! You can't. You can't do that. I mean, it's a, the archetypal thing. You know, it's 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 just not. It's just not going to work. I think. Well, take me home. Then for leaving for leaving Bill Bar, Was it a training ground? Was that literally the trigger of like I am gone. Well, it was, it was, it, it, it broke the relationship. This was, this was after, you know, the famous season of Bilbao where they reached, you know, two cup finals and um, they played brilliantly and just kind of ran out of steam. Uh, and as, as Herrera says, so just, we couldn't move in the last six, six games. We were being trained so hard. They had this fantastic season. Everybody began taking notes of Athletic Bilbao. Our sponsors came in and um, they were going to redo the training ground. Uh, but they Bielsa went on holiday back to back to Rosario, and when he came back, it was like you know it was the work was late. It wasn't what he thought it was going to be. There was cement mix. It was like an episode of Grand Designs gone horribly, horribly wrong. And um, Kevin McLeod was sort of saying, well, well, <laughs> "What do you think?" And he and he and he he went around taking photos of the works and 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 uh, taking them to press conference. So this is this is you know the the. The building's shoddy. It's it's not being put together properly. And then after the press conference, the Athletic Bilbao board then issues a statement apologising to the construction company. And so it all went horribly wrong. And then he didn't leave then, but they didn't renew his contract after season two. And um, 
that was by that's by mutual consent. What were they doing? I know the what, training ground. The training ground. These owners are just stupid. Of all things to do. Oh my! You God. might as well slap Bielsa's wife in the face. Yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's literally a crime as as... on that of yeah. that degree. What are it's you awful. doing? Mo like just oh, idiocy. God. I mean, I, I, well, thankfully, I, you know. Rad, Rads has got a laissez-faire policy when it comes to Bielsa. Yeah. Leave him alone, let him do what he wants. And long may that continue, because yeah. if he tries anything else, we might lose God. Yeah, and like I, I certainly wouldn't trade Bielsa for Ibrahimovic. And look, like, oh Ibra God, Ibra God, yeah, Ibra Ibrahimovic, right, Like I know he's a Man U player in the past. He's one of the coolest players ever. He's yeah, I you love know, him. I do like, love him. He's, he's amazing, incredible footballer. But like, can you, there is, like like Tim said, there is no player who is less likely to flourish under Bielsa. He's the worst player you could Absol pick. We were desperate for a striker, but not that striker. He's like, the worst. They, they, they would go to blows immediately. Completely. He'd and who would win? Stripped to the waist, ready to go. Yeah, he would just unzip his jacket as, yeah. soon, as, he, as soon as he parked his whatever he car he, like, you know, he parked his jet. Zlatan is trained in like, is it Taekwondo? Yeah, he's hard as nails. Yeah, and he does all those like mad kicks, but Bielsa's got a hand grenade, so I reckon Marcelo wins. Marcelo wins every fight, we know that. Yeah. And in the end, it, it, he would ruin um he would ruin his career because he'd be like you know that an undefeated boxer loses a fight and yeah. just never recover. <laughs> that's, that's what Not happened. Beat the he would be a, yeah, he would be a shit footballer. It just like it, it would be crap. Yeah. So that's never gonna work. So, just straight away, that's a fight. Bielsa wins, Ibrahimovic goes home. This is it. So that there are those twin conflicts with Bielsa. There are the practical level of dealing with an owner is incredibly difficult. But I guess you can get that with a president. You know that can that same thing yeah. can happen. But at least at that point, the fans can vote the president out. Yes. You know. But the inherent conflict that I think Bielsa has is with yeah working for business and not working for the fans like he does in Argentina. He's working for the people, but mm. the contract is signed with the business. Exactly. Exactly. So a conflict of interest for there's Bielsa. the conflict there. So there it is on uh, fan ownership. I mean, it's look as a romantic, it's something I'd love to see in Britain. I'd certainly love to see fans have a stake in the clubs. I, I think it's unrealistic um, to expect that fans are going to own the clubs. Uh, it would require too much of a revolution. In How English do you football. go about starting that process? But uh, I, th I definitely think the fans should demand a stake in the clubs, even if it's a small percentage. Fans need to have a voice on the boards and I think there should be every single club in Britain, in England, should uh, have uh, like the fans should be a member of the board at the very least. I think that COVID might be the catalyst for the lower leagues to change. Yeah, and I hopefully from there we can all go with them. So, but the thing is, if you want this to happen, if we want these things to happen, we make them happen. We're the ones who make these things get go. Get militant. Let's get the hang grenades out. Let's start fighting people. Let's take it to the business. <laughs> Now, to conclude our episode, as ever, we like to delve into the archives of the Bielsa Bible. We have a lot of sacred texts that Mickey has been going through, searching for stories that may not have seen the light of day before. Some of these are untold stories. I mean, they're all stories that you've found and selected that maybe you've not heard before. I've unearthed this beauty, and Ooh. I will read it immediately, because it's, it's it relates a little bit to what's been said today, mm -hmm. and it's a really interesting angle on Bielsa, and not every victory can be, can be won. Oh, interesting. The parable of the terrible owner. Oh. God looked deep into the eyes of his talismanic striker, Patrick Bamford, and asked him what was wrong. Bamford bowed his head and replied, Oh, it... It's nothing, boss. Aye. Wow! Is it the finish? It's rated about three on FIFA, in it. Not now, Pervader, said Patrick sternly, as Ian Carlo apologised and ran away like a speeding bullet, nutmegging Luke Ayling in the process. It's them, isn't it? Said he who is glorious and mighty, as Patrick nodded his head in agreement. Unfortunately, Bamford had spent his early career at the worst club in history. They'd loaned him out to crap places like Middlesbrough, and the darkness of the club still weighed heavily on the pure and saintly soul of God's number nine. He who's without sin knew it was time to settle things like gentlemen. God immediately got on the bus and found himself at the gates of Stamford Bridge, not the ancient battleground that saw the Norwegian King Harald Hardrada slain in 1066, but the one in West London that harbours the worst football club in history. 
As God entered the building, he noticed how immoral and evil the entire enterprise was and immediately began to overturn tables in a rage befitting of Lee Boyer in a Newcastle shirt. Why I lads <laughs> and lasses. <laughs> you must stop for the law prevents you from harming my property said Roman Abramovich as he entered the room <laughs> cackling to himself. <laughs> I've been expecting you. <laughs> God who is righteous and civil stopped turning over tables and began to unzip the holy tracksuit in preparation for battle. Just then, the Chelsea under-12s ran into the room carrying Kalashnikovs because instead of nurturing their talents, Abramovich had turned them into child soldiers and they began firing upon God, who simply held the tracksuit in front of him like a holy shield. Stop, you will ruin my gold furnishings, shouted Roman. As he turned to the Lord and said, I have something to show you. Suddenly, Fraud Lampard appeared, accompanied by his girlfriend, Christine Blakely. Oh, not again, Frank, said Christine in an Irish accent almost as bad as her taste in men. <laughs> Without hesitation, Fat Frank lifted up the shirt of Abramovich and began suckling on his nipple. The whole congregation stared in disbelief as the devil aggressively sucked and slurred upon the flabby, twisted teat of the Russian criminal. Within seconds, black oil began to flow into the gaping mouth of the devil. As more and more crude was gurgled by Satan, it began to flow onto the floor and slowly fill the room as Lampard let out orgasmic cries. God knew that he could not possibly do battle with so many children present, and the sight of Lampard suckling a Russian criminal was almost too much to bear. It was time to leave. This battle is one that will have to wait until the child slaves of Chelsea are finally out of harm's way. As God left the room, he heard a loud and overexcited American accent call in his direction. It was the glaziers in waiting in the foyer. Yo there, Marcella Bielso. I just love what you're doing at the Mighty Whites. Well, massive fans, go team leads. I just got to say, keep it up and we'll keep ripping off scum. Now, let's get some corn dogs and baseball. Perhaps club ownership does have one advantage thought God as he wiped the scummy oil of Chelsea from his shoes and returned to the holy ground that is Thorpe Arch. <laughs> wow. An incredible well, story. An incredible story that contained some incredible accents. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I re I re like they were in the room. Yeah, it really was. I mean, I don't know if you've ever heard Roman Abramovich. That speak. is actually what it sounds like. Bam. Yeah, like a, like a baddie. <laughs> So that's all from us on the BL Survival this week. Thank you so much for watching as ever. Make sure if you're watching this on YouTube, you have liked and subscribed. Leave us a review and a rating if you are listening to this as a podcast. Check out our merch at thebielsurvival.com forward slash shop and subscribe to us on Patreon. It is patreon.com forward slash thebielsurvival. It certainly is. I've got kids. <laughs> well, there's only three more words left, Rob. Vamos, Bielsa, Carajo. Carajo.